Hello you guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Today is a fun video because I'm going to be cooking all day. Oh. This is a what I eat in a day. I'm doing Whole30 right now, which is a diet where you do no dairy, grains, nothing with added sugar, no alcohol, no beans. But the reason I like it is you can eat as much as you want as long as you don't eat those things. It's really the only diet I've ever done where I've actually lost weight. My body's sort of weird, I think, but I've done this twice before. Both times I've felt healthier by the end and lost a little bit of weight. I think the point of it is it cuts out a lot of common allergens for people. So anyway, I'm gonna do three meals. For breakfast, I'm doing a frittata. After I did this last time, my mom was at a garage sale and found this, which is a Whole30 cookbook, and it's been awesome. I've made multiple recipes out of here. I made a chili. Actually, this frittata is similar to the one they make in here. I've made this ranch. You make like all your own sauces, which is really fun. This cookbook's pretty awesome. It's been fun. I've been cooking fancier things because you kind of have to make it taste good without any of the good stuff, like <laughs> sugar and cheese. And Got all my ingredients here. Sun-dried tomatoes. These are the game changer. Everyone should get sun-dried tomatoes. They're so good. These will go in last. Some frozen peppers down here, which I just brought from Whole Foods. Don't worry, we're not rich. We don't normally shop at Whole Foods, but got these peppers there. Don't worry. <laughs> I got diced onion. It's just a little bit of the onion and then some bacon bits. Make sure you find Whole30 compliant bacon, which the Costco sodium bacon is super good for that. And then I have six eggs. I preheated the oven to 350 because this whole thing is going to go in the oven. And that's another thing about Whole30. Cast iron is great. I love cooking with it. I don't know, like not just for Whole30, but it's good. Bacon is going in first. And a pepper. So while this is going, I'm gonna put the eggs in here and whisk them or beat them or whatever you do with eggs. <laughs> One of the keys to frittatas, which I've learned because I've made two now, you really wanna put the eggs in the pan and let them cook before you bake the whole thing. And that gives it a really nice, almost like crispy edges. Now the egg's cooking, and the last thing I do is I add a few of these sun-dried tomatoes, just sprinkle them around the top. So good. So it's been cooking for a few minutes on the stovetop. I usually just watch until I see the sides are looking kind of cooked. And then once that's done, I just pop it in the oven. I don't really know how long I cook it for. I just check that once the top is not wet looking and kind of golden brown, then I think it's done. I'm gonna pop that in now. Pretty easy meal, and it usually lasts me two breakfasts, so that's nice because then I don't have to make breakfast tomorrow. I ended up cooking it for about eight minutes in the oven, and then I switched it from 350 up to broil, and then I broiled it for another like two minutes to get the top nice and brown, and it looks really good. Nice and golden brown. Pretty easy to make. I just put some guacamole and salt and pepper and some hot sauce on top, and then it'll be quite tasty. Welcome back to Josh's Whole30 Kitchen. I'm gonna be making some red curry with this stuff, red curry paste. I have no idea where we got this. Hopefully it's good. This has directions on the back on how to make the curry, but I'm sort of deviating because I'm gonna cook the chicken in the oil first, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of curry sauce, then coconut milk, then all the veggies, and then more coconut milk. I've got a red bell pepper, two different types of potatoes, and onion. And see, this is why making your own curry is good, because normally potatoes don't come in red curry. But I can put them in. Often I get yellow curry just because it's the one that has the potatoes, and I love potatoes and curry. I can put the potatoes in my red curry, because I'm in charge. So chicken first, ready cut chicken breast. It's pretty nice because they're already cut. You can just chuck them in to some hot oil. I'm gonna try this little thing. I've never used this before, but Molish says it can cube things. I don't think I did that right. It's more correct. 
Ja, ist das auch noch nichts. which I googled it and 50 grams is a third cup. Squeeze this into here. Stir fry this paste. We've added the coconut milk. We were theoretically supposed to stir fry that curry paste, but it was just sticking to the pan. I guess maybe my pan was too hot. I'm not sure. I added the coconut milk early. Add another half cup of coconut milk, which is still left, and a half cup of water and heat until boiling. So that's the next step. Everything is boiling in here, so now I'm gonna add another half cup of coconut milk and a half cup of water, which I just put in this little can. And then I let that cook for a while before adding the veggies. Got all my vegetables right here. This has been boiling for a little while, so I think it's time to add them. And then, we basically just cook until the vegetables are cooked, which I don't know how long that takes. It's looking like curry. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to make is some riced cauliflower. We got like this big bag of it from Costco. This, it comes with four of these little bags in it. And I'm going to do the stovetop method. I've never tried it before, but that seems like it'll make it less moist. This is a nonstick pan. It's already hot. And I'm just going to dump this all in there, I guess. Cauliflower rice is just finishing up cooking. Sort of hard to tell when it's done, but I'm just telling because all the rice is warm and there's no more water in it. We're done with that. The curry is also done, I think. I'm gonna try one of these potatoes to make sure that it's actually cooked. It is all done. Here's a look at it. Got my curry over here, cauliflower rice over here, and I'm about to taste it. Mm. It's good. You can tell the curry is not quite as sweet because often in curry recipes you add sugar afterwards and obviously I can't because of Whole30, but it's tasty. The cauliflower is good. I'm glad that I'm covering it with curry because cauliflower rice is not my favorite, but when it's covered in curry, you can't really tell it. Thumbs up for this recipe. I'm about to try a new dinner recipe. It is Whole30 nachos. So on Whole30, we can't have any grains, beans, or dairy. So that makes nachos tough. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to have cheese for the tortilla chips, but what I've done so far is I've sliced a potato into really thin little pieces, and I've tossed it in a little bit of olive oil. So I'm gonna bake these for the base, and then I'm about to start cooking some ground turkey and make that into taco meat, and then I've got some guac in the fridge, we've got some salsa, so I think it's gonna be tasty. So I cut up one potato and that's actually too much for these two pans. Still have some left over but it almost fit across the two pans. Now I'm going to put some fresh grated Himalayan salt across these bad boys. There's the potatoes. They're mostly not overlapping. Preheated the oven to 400. Potatoes are in the oven. I'm gonna let them cook on one side for maybe like 10 minutes and the next side for a little less than that. Hopefully it'll get nice and crispy. Also cooking the turkey. Gonna add some taco seasoning and some lime juice probably. seasoning, maybe a little water if it needs more liquid. Meat 
that's all done, let's take a look at the potatoes. They're starting to look pretty good. Might be time to flip them. It has now been like 20 minutes of the potatoes in the oven. Some are getting super done and others still aren't cooking that well. So what I've done is I take the tray out, I pull off the ones that are cooked well, and then I put it back in. I've got this many chips so far. And I ate like three of them too, so Malicia's laughing at me in the background. But I think the other ones are getting close to done. I've got the meat done, there's the guac, and I'm lazy, so I'm using paste picante sauce. Paste picante. And she gets real nachos. So I'm pregnant. Woo! <laughs> All right, there you have my homemade potato chips. You can see some of them got pretty crispy. I've tried them though, they still taste good looking like that. The potatoes just did not cook super evenly, but I imagine it'll still be tasty. So now it's time to put together the nachos. show you guys what it looks like. I just finished. Look at that. My little potato chips, turkey taco meat, homemade guac, and salsa, and a little tapatio across the top. Looks good. Let's find out if it tastes good. We'll hi them. Mmm. It's good. Yep. I like that a lot. Homemade mm. potato chips. I'm not sure how to get the potatoes to cook evenly. I think that's the, that was the hardest part about this. I kept taking them out and taking off the cooked ones. But in general, I really like it. So, highly recommend this recipe. All right, there you have it. Those three meals turned out pretty good. Hope you guys liked watching what I eat in a day. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed already, do that too. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Show them your cookbook that you've been loving. Oh, yes. Woo! So, here we go. Cooking. <laughs> yeah. All right. Am I still? For this meal. Ah. Uh, moist. Where are you going? Say you don't fit under there. <laughs> Use a very big dog in a very small space. <laughs> okay, bye.